Our first speaker finished her Bachelor of Science in Food Technology at the University of the Philippines Visayas. She is also a DOSC Accelerated Science and Technology Human Resource Development Program Scholar and finished her Master's in Science at the University of the Philippines. She is also a registered microbiologist And currently, she is working at the science. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all send a clap emoji in our chat boxes as we welcome Ms. Catherine to discuss the introduction to shelf life testing. Ma'am? Hi, good day to everyone. Welcome to our webinar on testing matters. I'm Catherine Damaso, a scholar graduate and researcher deployed here at TOSD6. We have been receiving a lot of queries about your shelf life testing needs, especially from MSMEs. So we hope that this would be able to help in explaining the basics of shelf life. Here is an outline of the topics that I'll be covering. So let's start. Kung magkadto kita sa grocery or supermarket, amon ni ang usual nato nga makita, di ba? Before we buy uh, any item, ginagbasa ta anay gid ang iyang nga tibet. Now, one of the things that consumers look at is this. Ginapangita nato ang iya best before or expiry date. Dira kita usually nagabase kung okay pa gid man ini baklon. Siguro, while thinking, kung i-use mo na gidman siya right away or i-store mo pa kaya. So, ano kalawin gina? Mabakal ka bala or makaon sa food item na expired? Hindi, di ba? So, it is important to the consumer na may basis siya kung until when gidman bala. Pwede ko inikaunon or uh, syempre without worrying sa akon nga safety kag uh, hindi man maglain ang iyang sabor. Responsibility man sang manufacturer, of course, to provide this kind of information. So, that brings us to shelf life. What is shelf life? Shelf life as the length of time after production and packaging that a product retains the desired uh, level of quality under defined storage conditions. And it allows the, that kind of food to be acceptable still for consumption. Another definition of shelf life, um, it is the period of time during which the food remains safe, retains its quality characteristics, and complies with declared nutrition data when stored, of course, under recommended conditions. Going forward, when gid man nagaumpisa ang ginatawag na shelf life sang isa ka food product, this is actually right after the food product is processed and packed. Then, syempre, off to logistics and into grocery shelves, up to the point where it is bought and before being opened for consumption. Who is it that influences the shelf life of a product? First, producers of your raw materials. You will only be able to make good quality products if your raw materials are also of good quality to begin with. One way is to have a accreditation program for suppliers. Also for other suppliers, like for your packaging materials, do they have a track record of supplying you damaged packaging? May gin provide ba sila a certification sa inyo? If my pinholes na karon, for example, ang inyo packaging for chicharon, uh, that would mean a very big loss for your business. So these factors are important and influence your shelf life greatly. Manufacturers, of course, have the biggest influence, especially on how handling and processing is being done. Now, distribution and retail stores also influence the shelf life through their handling and storage practices. Do they follow the instructions set by the food manufacturer? Consumers like me and you also have a part in this. 
If nakahambal sa product label that you should be placing it under chill conditions and yet you left it at room temperature, then you may have already affected the shelf life of that unopened food product. That's why we conduct shelf life studies. Now, what is a shelf life study? Uh, this is a systematic and objective way of determining the length of time that a product will reasonably keep under specific storage conditions without any significant quality changes. What are the reasons for conducting a shelf life study then? You may be developing a new product, you may have added an ingredient, or maybe nag-use ka sang nitrogen flushing. Also, if you declared, for example, that your beverage contains 100% vitamin C, you want to make sure nga throughout sang iyang expected shelf life na maintain yung gidman ang required value. This would help you very much to curb, siyempre, economic losses which may result from quality and safety issues sa imo product. We must remember, though, that a shelf life study is not meant to solve quality-related issues. We will learn why in the upcoming parts of this presentation. So, what are the factors that affect how long a product can last? First, we have ingredients and formulation. Did you perhaps choose to use a permitted additive to preserve your food product? Or maybe sugar in such a way that it can lower the water activity of your food? Second, what is the processing method that you use? This is, of course, dependent on what's appropriate for your product and the resources available to you. For sure, di ba, ang fruit na din retort and uh, nakakan would have a longer shelf life than one which was pasteurized. Next, what kind of packaging are you using? Is it transmissible? Nakalusot ba la ang light? Or does it protect your product from it? Modifying the atmosphere also contributes to extending your packed product's shelf life. Fourth, frozen by la, refrigerated, or ambient temperature. What is the relative humidity of the area in which it should be stored? Taking those factors into consideration, what is it? that we require from clients who want to avail our shelf life testing service. We always emphasize that the formulation and packaging of your product is already fine. Any changes would invalidate the shelf life study conducted. Your results are only applicable to what was declared at the beginning of the study. So shelf life testing is also a tedious process and quite expensive because it involves a lot of tests. We ask you to declare also information pertaining to those factors that affect the shelf life of a product, as discussed earlier. So uh, that comprises the exact list of your ingredients, processing method, type of packaging used, and so forth. Kung may ara certificate of analysis, especially sa microbial tests, we also ask for them. We need to agree on a sampling plan and quotation for the coverage of tests to be conducted. So, gina assess ni Shanamon based man sa imo declared expected shelf life and mode of deterioration sa product. Dapat ang client nakasupply sa needed number of packs sa sampling plan from one single new batch of production. Since unique and shelf life testing requirements for each type of product, we look at how it is classified in order to correctly assess the duration of the study, parameters to watch out for, or quality indices that need to be included for testing when we design ang imunga shelf life study. In terms of stability, we have semi perishable and shelf stable products. Food can also be classified according to risk. Ang low-risk food, these are the food which are uh, unlikely to contain um, pathogens or harmful toxins. Medium-risk food are those which could possibly contain pathogens but not support their growth and unlikely to contain pathogens due to some processing steps which you use, but the food could support toxin formation. B 
these high-risk food naman have a high possibility of both containing and supporting the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. They may also support uh, toxin formation and allow remain in the food. How does shelf life testing work? What is it that we do? These are the three key areas for testing that are involved. So first, microbiological testing. This is the most critical as it determines the safety of your product. So we test for the presence of harmful organisms which may cause illness to the consumer. It can also tell us at what point in time the product would exceed the limit of allowable counts, which may indicate a safety concern or product spoilage. Physical chemical testing helps us determine quality indices like moisture content or pH so that uh, changes in these properties during storage may in turn um, you know, affect those uh, that uh, contribute to microbial growth or even the texture of your product. And the third one, sensory analysis. This involves a panel uh, responsible for testing whether the food maintains its taste, color, odor, and uh, texture, as well as if it develops undesirable characteristics. Here is an example of where we obtain standards for microbial tests. These are guidelines for quality of processed food items. So usually, to get a baseline of your product safety, you require either a certificate of analysis or your samples for shelf life study. You would need to uh, let us test five sample packs or units from a single batch. They have to conform to GMP levels indicated by the small m. And there's a big M, as you can see, for the threshold level that if exceeded by a C number of packs, or in this case, would cause the entire lot or batch of the food product to be rejected. We also make use of available PNS or Philippine quality standards to determine the quality criteria we should apply to the product for testing. In this case, we have uh, water activity, then yeast and mold count for micro, and rancidity as a defect to watch out for in sensory evaluation. Apart from the actual analysis, we have two methods available in DOSD 6 in conducting the shelf life study. First, the direct method involves storing your whole batch of newly processed samples into an incubator period is going to be uh, longer than the expected shelf life which you have previously declared. So yes, you would have to wait a long while if your product, uh, let's say, has a six-month life expectancy. So uh, we take out samples in between and test them according to quality parameters needed. Uh, the second one, or the indirect method, uh, we use several temperature points in storing your samples to accelerate the uh, process of uh, shelf life testing. So we integrate the data obtained and predict shelf life. This is faster but less re reliable and needs to be verified in most cases. So remember, an atom shelf life study design is unique for each type of product. Why is SLT necessary. Nga ang kailangan ko give magpa-test si ni kamahal. First, you want to assure your consumers of the quality and safety of your food product. You want to give them the correct information and also uh, you want to comply to regulatory standards. This reduces the risk of recalls and helps you increase your profits in the long run. In relation to SLT, we also have uh, mandatory labeling requirements. So manufacturers are mandated to reflect these important information on their food packaging. There must be instructions on the proper use and correct storage of the food item. If it is to be placed in a chiller, at what temperature that needs to be placed on the 
an open date marking indicating the expiry or best before date should also be on your packaging. So uh, that should be formatted as day, month, and year uh, with day expressed in numerals and month expressed in words. Finally, uh, in relation to shelf life, nutrition or information, uh, which is also on the packaging, um, needs to be maintained uh, at least 80% of the declared value until the end of shelf life. Another important aspect of shelf life testing is the re registration of prepackaged processed food. So sa subong, there is uh, an observed greater enforcement of this by the Philippine F. Consumers are usually being warned if a certain product is sold without a valid registration. One of the requirements for product registration is actually information on shelf life. So the FDA asks for the declared shelf life and the results of the corresponding study conducted. So they allow this uh, to be done by competent staff in either an in-house laboratory and for most who lack the resources, outsourced to an accredited laboratory. In response to this and to support mainly the MSMEs who need this service, uh, next start and the OST6 offer shelf life testing uh, for baked products and snack foods. So because limited lang ang among agents for the tests, we really try our best to accommodate you. But of course, we are looking forward to expanding our services in the future and in the soonest time. So that ends my presentation for now. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, you can actually type them in into our uh, Q&A box. If uh, we have clients here attending, um, you may send your inquiries through email at uh, rstl at ro6.dost.gov.th. So please stay tuned for our next speaker. Thank you.